and we are a rockin' awesome team, if you've never been on this team, thought. Um, just a few housekeeping things. We do have Super Saturday this weekend. Who has registered for Super Saturday? Raise your hand, show of hands. Well, oh, Tara's making the face. What? Tara, how dare you? I think you even have Sarah on this call. Your downline is on the call and you have registered for Super Saturday. <laughs> Guys, get registered. Super Saturday is something that I have never missed and I've been in this business, it'll be six years in January, I've made it a priority every single time. I've made a priority even when it was inconvenient. So if you gotta drive an hour, drive an hour, go to it. If you gotta get a babysitter, get a babysitter. If you gotta bring your kids with you, bring kids with you. But be at a Super Saturday, it really will help you with your business. Um, it gives you a lot of content to post about um, in terms of, especially if you're a newer coach and you've never been to an event, um, being at a Super Saturday allows you to be like, Whoa! with all these crazy people I'm not the only crazy one here doing my workout um, and I would definitely suggest finding one um, even if you look at one that's local or close to you and it looks kind of podunk y'all use the word podunk <laughs> if it looks a little podunk then maybe go find one that's not <laughs> Lindsay's like really you use the word podunk on the interwebs. <laughs> Lindsay also uses little interwebs. Um, we pick on her about that. But no, find one if they're like, you know, Sagi's coming to this one, then drive and go to the one Sagi's going to Autumn or Joel. All the super trainers will be out at Super Saturdays, usually at the larger city ones. Um, if they sell a ticket and it's like 20 bucks, this probably means they have something to offer you, some value to give you. So I would say go to one that maybe has a ticket sale. That's kind of the way I was able to decipher. If you are in the DC region, that's the one that um, that I organize and put together. So I won't be there. I'll be actually be in San Diego. And in January 14th, I'll be in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So if you're in Pennsylvania, I'll be speaking at the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania event there. So, all right, that is the big um, um, housekeeping thing is to get your butt super Saturday. Okay? Okay. Check, check. Um, and then Shift Shop launch is in full swing. Nicola, what is the launch date for Proving Grounds? Is anybody? October 22nd. October 22nd. So that is next month, this Monday coming up. Um, remember, there is a um, there is a coach test group that that um, Chris is running himself. And so if you um, are a coach, obviously all you guys are coaches, and um, you are gonna do Proving Grounds, make sure you get into that coach test group. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, jump into your team page and ask, because um, it will be a lot of fun, especially if you're planning on doing Proving Grounds. Apparently Chris at Leadership said that he was gonna like kick all y'all's behinds in coaching, as well as your workouts. So he really wants to pour into your mindset and stop getting, you know, fearful and scared of invites and all that stuff and actually help you in those areas as well. Um, the other leverage point that you can use for that is if you have any challengers that are on the fence of coaching that you've talked to in the past, um, that's a good way to say, hey, I know you've considered coaching in the past, but if you want to be a part of um, Oh, that's cool. Sorry, <laughs> I saw your chats. Um, if you want to be a part of a coach test group with the actual trainer, you can, but you got to sign up as a coach. So let's get you enrolled as a coach so that you can do this group with us. Um, and so that is Proving Grounds. It starts October 22nd. It's with Chris Downing, and there is a, a coach test group that um, he will be hosting. And I know Chris, he goes live. He's very hands-on with his challenge group. So he'll be going live and he says he will whip your butt in shape as a coach. So that's awesome. Um, all right, so that's all of our announcements. Hopefully everybody has checked their back office, you know, like our normal, especially if you're an Emerald coach or you're a Diamond coach, you check and you make sure you have your active statuses because Wednesday night, tomorrow morning, you don't want to wake up. Be like, I'm not Emerald anymore. <laughs> time in anymore. You got to go check on it. All right, so we're going to get into the Q&A session. If you hear something that I say and you're like, I would like a little bit more on that topic, write it in the chat section so that I can um, address it so that Nicola can ask. So we'll go ahead and get started. Nicola is going to ask the questions that you guys posted in, um, in the page. Okay, so the first question is from, I believe it's Liza Black. 
Mm -hmm. It says, as a new team leader, what should my priority tasks be in setting up my coaches and setting up my business activities, team page, et cetera? Um, and is there any specific books or help for marketing on social media? Very good. Those are two separate questions. Um, when you start signing coaches onto your team, there, there's this like pivotal moment where people start to feel like they've got to go into management mode and they stop doing the activities that got them to a team. Like all of a sudden you got three coaches, you got four coaches, you got 12 coaches. I don't know. Maybe you only got one coach. You start getting these coaches, you get all excited about your team, which is great. And then you stop doing the things that got you the team. And that's where you get into troubled waters because when you stop doing the activities that got you the team, you'll find that sometimes the team starts to dwindle a little bit or the people that you thought were going to be rock stars end up fading away. And so my best piece of advice for you guys that are starting to build a team, three, four coaches, um, is to don't stop the activities that got you those three or four coaches. Stay plugged in. 80% of your time should be continuing to build your business, continuing to fill your challenge groups, continuing to hit success club five or above every single month. And then the 20% of your time should be spent on mentoring your coaches. You've got to focus on your business because honestly, when you focus on your business and you do the activities that you want them to be doing, they will actually duplicate you much better by watching your behaviors rather than you trying to handhold them through it. Um, and so one mistake that a lot of coaches make is when they become team leaders and they start growing their own teams is they stop the behaviors that got them there. Oops. They stop the behaviors that got them there and they find themselves a few weeks in and they're like, I'm not hitting success club. My coaches are like falling apart. Like what's going on? Um, and so that's my best piece of advice to that. The other question was, um, best thing to read in terms of personal development for social media. I don't know if there is, I would say there's something to read. There's a lot of good stuff on YouTube. You can get totally sucked into like every YouTube video, but the best thing you can do for your social media is maybe watch one or two and then start doing it. Like just take action because honestly, the more you do it, the better you get at it. We all started at some point. I know I started with stories at one point and my stories were really bland. They're really boring. Then I started learning, Oh, I can do fonts or I can do stickers or now I can layer. Um, and actually one of the best things I would advise you, especially with stories is go watch some people that you think do a really good job with their stories and you'll start discovering things that they do. I'll tell you my favorite person to watch. She's not even beach buddy. Ready? This is the person I get most of my ideas from. And my, and my team definitely knows this. Her name's Alex Beaton. Alex, A-L-E-X, Beaton, B-E-A-D-O-N, I believe, or D-E-N. Um, she is like a, I don't buy any of her material. Like, I'm not into her stuff. I'm not promoting her, telling her, telling you to go buy her stuff. I just watch her stories because she's so freaking creative. Um, and even to a creative point where I'm like, oh my God, I'm feeling overwhelmed. So what I do is I just watch and I'm like, Ooh, I never thought of doing a highlighter around like this and making it a frame and doing this over here. Like I just didn't think of doing those things. And so it gives me ideas. So in terms of learning better social media, go follow some people. It doesn't have to be Beachbody who are just really good at it. Um, and they'll give you ideas and you can obviously watch YouTube videos, um, on people that are good at it as well. I know I have one on on Instagram that's on YouTube. If you want to check it out, it tells a lot of the apps and things that I use, but the best thing you can do is just get started. And the more you do it, the better you get at it and then watch other people and what they're doing and maybe duplicate that. If you see a coach do a call to action, you're like, that was really cool. I never thought of doing it that way. Um, Kelly King is in the middle of doing her call to action. And I was watching her and I'm like, actually, Lindsay had the same one as well. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these girls are on fire. I like want to screenshot things just so I can like reuse them. Um, but you get ideas from watching some other people, but don't get so sucked into those watching eye people where you don't actually take action yourself because that happens a lot. Good question though. Okay. This question is from Katrina Rosita. She would like to know how to create a new coach training together that can be easily duplicated for other coaches that can be run every month. 
she wants to start getting systems into place so she doesn't feel like a crazy woman. And so I know things are running smoothly. Mm-hmm. She says she knows there's Benefi, but I'm curious if you do anything or how you train your new coaches. Um, this has been a struggle spot for me. I 100% like real with you guys. It's not been the easiest thing for me. I've tried a bunch of different things. Um, we started by just doing like, you know, two week or 21 day um, trainings where we would post talk about social media. We would talk about how to share your story. Um, obviously social media is ever changing. And so our training would continually have to change. Um, you've got to find what's going to work best for your sanity. What we've decided to do is go to an online course page. Um, it takes a little time in the front, but, um, it can be done or you can do the assignments in your team page. There's actually a way to create assignments within your team page so that your newer coaches that you onboard or your coaches coaches that you onboard, all you have to do is tell them is to go to the assignments and start working your way through them. So I'd say as a newer coach starting to build a team, using the assignments on Facebook is a great way to get all your material on there so that people can start working through them at their own pace. Um, And that way you can guarantee that people within your downline, people that maybe you didn't sign actually have um, access to your actual coaching. So I saw that Jessica, I saw you doing a story. (laughs) She just got called out. She's like, I'm on a team call. (laughs) That's a good question now. Okay. Next question is from, well, Sarah has a few. Um, What's your schedule like as a full-time BB coach? How do you manage your time throughout the day? Um, I work all day. I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's what I'm going to (laughs) say. I do. I think, I think that you have to remember everybody's different and everybody has different goals and, and certain things bring people joy that don't bring other people joy. So some people, um, if you are a coach that like structure and you like organization and that like ministers to your heart, then get your freaking checklist, figure out your hours, sit down during your hours and work through your checklist. For me, a checklist or hours make me feel like I'm working a job and I don't like that. I didn't sign up for this beach body journey to feel like that I was at a nine to five. I like to be able to wake up, make my shake, do a story about making my shake. Then I go and do my workout or do my personal development. And then I jump on a call and I talk about story on the call. I mean like my, our jobs <laughs> are like all day. They're kind of ongoing all the time. There's content that's always popping up. Um, and so I just share my day with my audience. Um, and I consider that my work. Um, my actual sit down and invite times are very, they're pockets. They're very random. They're when, I mean, I'm a mom of kids. And so I can't always just sit down for an hour and work. Um, and when I do, it's usually when they're in school. So I just try to find that pocket of time that will work best for me. Um, and so you got to, kind of plan out your day and your life and what works for you. If you, like I said, if you're a scheduled person, get a checklist, have a business activity tracker, work through that every single day. For me, I like, I I get so much joy with just doing this business. It happens from the moment I wake up until right now I'm still working. Like I haven't stopped, but a lot of it is, it's joy for me. You know what I mean? Like I paused and I had dinner with a friend and um, I worked out. That's part of my work, but I would say it's kind of an ongoing all day thing because it's just a part of my life. It's part of my lifestyle, but that doesn't make me feel like I'm working. So I think you just have to do what works best for you. If you work full time, that's going to look different. Maybe you need a little bit more structure if you're working full time. Then when you get home from work or on your lunch break, you have some sort of list that you are prioritizing and you're going through um, so that you can make sure you're getting the basic activities in in your business while you're working or when you take time off or when you're at a stoplight. I don't know. I've done that too. (laughs) Or when you're using the bathroom. I'm just saying. I've done that too. Um, So hopefully that answers your question on, for me, I work all day, but I love it. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. It makes it a little bit easier but it can be done with a full-time job just as well. You just have to have a little bit more organization and you've got to have a tracking system to make sure you're doing the activities each day. Okay. So this was asked quite a bit. Um, it's dealing with using scripts when you're inviting. So Beth, um, 
said, using scripts every time I, I use them, I get people blocking, unfollowing, shutting the conversation down. So inviting takes a, me a long time because I'm personalizing each one. Um, is it okay to use scripts? And then somebody to somebody already asked, what do you say in your scripts if you're using them? So this is covering like three people. Yeah. Um, what I don't know if you guys noticed this is really cool. Just a sidebar on this actual topic. In um, your DMs, there's actually now a button, a code word button. It's actually in text message too, where you could type in, you know, um, invite. And then you could, once you type in invite, a whole paragraph pops up in the actual thing. It's such a time saver. And I'm still working through creating mine. Um, that's a side note. And it's really cool that you can do code words and it pulls up everything you would ever say if you use that word um, to that person. But I am not a big script person, but I do have go-tos that I have. I would say they're almost go-to taglines or key lines that I use at a certain point in the conversation. So mine always is very uh, relationship oriented. That just makes me feel better about it. Um, I'm, I'm not a cold, very good cold inviter. I feel like I get uncomfortable and it, I think it, my energy transfers to that person and then they feel more hesitant. And I'm all about like, if your energy is transferring negatively or a hesitant or unconfident, they're going to feel it and they're not going to buy into what you're buying or what you're selling. <laughs> um, and so for me, it's more about, um, connecting with that person on something that's totally unrelated to beach, but sometimes it's related to health and fitness, but most of the time it's related to lip gloss or eyelashes or hair extensions or how you cut your bob or what kind of color you put on your hair or where did you get that sports bra? Like those are the connections that I'm making with people. And as that relationship grows and develops, I feel like I have, um, I have authority or, or I have built trust in their life that I can actually say, oh my gosh, girl. Okay. I know we've been talking about hair extensions for like two weeks now and I'm loving mine. I'm so glad you got yours. Cool beans. So I've got this really cool group and I would love to have you in it with me. Like that would be so much fun. I've gotten to know you. You've become an awesome girlfriend. And now I just want you to do like this fitness journey with me. Is that something you would want to do with me? I, I think it would be awesome. Um, that's my like, Hey girl, kind of, basic invite. Um, when somebody comes to me and asks me a question, like, I see you work out a lot. What's in your shake? Or I see you do your shake a lot. What's in your shake? I never answer what's in my shake. I never tell them what, what I'm drinking. I pause, pause button, because we need to get some information from you first before I can answer that. Otherwise they're going to run and get the information or go to Amazon and buy it. So if somebody asks me about my shake, I pause. Somebody asks me about my workout, I pause. Somebody asks me about coaching, I pause and I ask questions. And the three questions, I know my team's heard me say this a million times, that I ask every single time, like this is my script, I tailor it, but this is my script every single time is, okay girl, I know you're asking me about my shake, my sexy mama shake, or even Energize. I know you've asked me about my mom crack, but first, before I can answer that, like, what are your goals with this thing? I know you're asking specifically about a shake, but do you like have actual fitness goals that you're working on? Um, and then also how is your nutrition? And I want you to be like real honest with me. Like how is your nutrition? Like what'd you eat yesterday from start to finish? And then lastly, do you have like big obstacles that you're struggling with? Like most people would say either they're trying to get pregnant or they work, they're a full-time nurse. So I ask questions um, that give me the exact content that I need to be able to respond and follow up with that. I use their words to and their why and their struggles and their needs and their goals to tailor my response. That takes time, but it's so much more effective than just like spamming it out and having people block you and unfriend you. I would rather grow in a friendship with somebody, get them in my group, help them get results, and you know, eventually be an amazing coach or grow in a friendship with somebody and they tell me no and I'm still growing in a friendship with somebody. You know what I mean? Like to me, that's much more rewarding and it's been successful. So I know some coaches do it other ways, other top coaches do it other ways, but I have to do what's going to be best for me and, and my joy and my, my peace of mind. Um, and so I don't have solid scripts, but I have lines that I use in certain parts of the conversation every single time, wash, rinse, repeat. Was there a third question on there? 
No, um, you, I mean, you covered it. It was all like, if you use scripts, what do you say in your scripts type of thing? So you covered everything. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not a big script person. Um, I do have a spouse, like signing your spouse script for like if my coach is signing up and they're like, I don't know how to go Emerald. I'm like, here's your, I have a, a script for my coaches on signing their spouse. Um, I have a script for the, what's your fitness goals? How's your nutrition? And what are your biggest obstacles? I have it saved in my notepad so I can copy and paste that. Um, you have a script for signing coaches? I have a script for signing coaches. So if they're like, I, I definitely want to become a coach. And it's like, this is what you do. One, two, three, four tells them exactly what they need to do. And I always end it in send me your headshot because send me your headshot. They're like, they're already thinking like, okay, I'm not going to sign up yet, but hold on, let me find a good headshot. <laughs> and they get really excited about that. I know I would. Um, and so that I have those kind of scripts, but not, um, look, Carly's smiling. She's like, yeah, I just sent my headshot. I was introduced to the team. <laughs> All right, what else? Okay, so the next question is from Lindsay Huser. She says, how do you keep track of your invites and follow-ups? After inviting, how do you get them to commit? And how many invites do you send a day? So the, in the very beginning, um, my invite and follow-up tracking system was in a notebook. Like, I'm a pen and paper person. Um, I, I know that if it's in a spreadsheet, <laughs> I will never look at it. Um, and so for me, it's pen and paper. Um, and if I'm going to sit down and remember, I, you guys, I told you, I'm not like a sit down, like forever sent, send out 30 invites kind of person. Um, but if I was going to do it and that was my, something that made me feel productive, um, I would sit down and I would write, and actually I did do this in the beginning. I wanted four coaches a month. That was my goal for the first like three years. I was going to sign four coaches a month, no matter what. So what I did is I wrote January, one, two, three, four, February, one, two, three, four, March, all the way through all 12 months. And so my actions were to fill those four spots every single month, no matter what. Um, and you could do that for challengers. If that's your focus, if your focus is just working on getting challengers in your challenge groups, you can say, I want three new people every single month. January, one, two, three, February, one, two, three, and like write it down on a piece of paper. And then from there, start working through, I mean, this bare bit, bare beginnings, Facebook friends list. I, I, I get on mentor calls. And I'm like, all right, Lindsay, pull up your friends list. Let me see who you got girl. Right. And I start going through and I'm like, all right, so tell me about Courtney. And she's like, I went to school with Courtney. She's like kind of Cool, I guess we don't really know each other that well. I'm like, all right, let's start interacting with her. And so start working through, pick a number, 10 people, 30 people, whatever your goal is and say, okay, 10 people a day, I'm going to start going through and I'm going to interact with them. So there's connections, there's invites and there's follow-ups. Are you going to connect with 10 people, invite 10 people and follow up with 10 people have some sort of system that works for you. And that's going to look different for everybody. Some people invite 30 a day, some people invite five a day, but you got to figure out what's best for you and your schedule and your family life and your work life and just be consistent with it. That's the best thing you do is pick a number and be consistent with it and set your goal on how many people you want a month in your challenge group on a challenge pack. How many coaches do you want to sign a month? Is it two? Cool. One, two, um, October. You need to. So write the number one and write the number two. And when Susan signs up, Susan's name literally just got written down. And now I know it's two. Oh, I only got three days left in the month and I have a number two blank. My activities are focused on finding my second coach. No ends, like there's no like diverting my attention because I'm focused on filling spot number two. Um, and just being really intentional and super consistent with that um, is the best thing you can do. Does that answer your question, Lindsay? User? She's like, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kelsey King had a coach ask her, how are you running your challenge groups right now? Um, are you doing a year round group for bud or are you running a new challenge group every month? And if it's every month, can customers keep going into the next challenge or is it only new people? She's having a hard time figuring out what works best for her. That's a great question. And honestly, there's no perfect formula. My formula has um, been pretty consistent and the same, but it does deviate and change as we have new product launches. So 
my go-to is every 30 days I run a challenge group. And my goal is to have five new customers. That means I hit Success Club 10, five new customers on a challenge pack in that challenge group. I pick a name for the group, like a month out. Pick a name of the group. So right now we have no mom left behind. So if I know that my challenge group for no mom left behind, I'm just gonna pick a date. Say it starts on October 15th, that's day one. Then I know on October 8th they need to sign up or they need to have ordered their challenge pack so they can get their Shakeology in time to start with all of us. Um, and then I reverse engineer that two weeks out so that my communication to my audience and to my followers is focused on no mom left behind. And if that means showing them that, that I'm on a Zoom call working out with other chicks, that means um, the, painting the value of the challenge group and the community aspect of things all draws them back to no mom left behind so that when I go to do my call to action in my stories or on my wall, it makes sense in their brain. And so every 30 days I run a challenge group. The only thing that throws that rotation off is if we have a new product launch. And I want, I would love to be a, an amazing, like ideal trophy coach that runs a challenge group for every single product launch. But there are just some that I, <laughs> I haven't been able to wrap my brains around, so I haven't been perfect in that area. Um, but new product launches are fantastic ways to um, push your business forward. So I'm definitely a proponent of doing that. Lift Four comes out, we ran a team Lift Four group. So when a new launch happens, we run a team group. It's easier. We, we call it, you know, our, our epic test group. So we run a team group. Um, but for me personally, my 30 day groups with me and my customers are always happening. Do I let people in? My rule of thumb is you're allowed in two rounds of my 30 day groups. And then once you've done two rounds, you move over to my VIP group. So let me like break all this down. I have a VIP group, Jatana Jackson's customers, loyal customers. Everybody goes in there when they've done at least two rounds with me. I run 30 day groups every single month with a new name, a new marketing plan wrapped around that reverse engineer two weeks out. And then I have new launch groups. If a new product's being launched, then our team does new launch groups so that we can all experience it with our customers together. So we have VIP group, every 30, every day, 30 day group, because that every day, 30 group, 30 day group allows you to push for success club. That is my anchor for Success Club every single month. I have something to drive new customers into. And then I have my launch group, which is something that we do team-wide. And I encourage you to lean in with your team when new launches happen. Does that help? And hopefully that answered her question. Okay. Um, one more question. And Lindsay, I will send you the script that you're asking for for coaching. Um, is from Steven. Let me find it. Sorry. How do I add value to my post? I'm getting likes on my Instagram posts, but it's all people that don't live in the USA and I don't know how to reach out besides, hey, thanks for showing some love on my post. Okay. Read the beginning of the question again. How do I add value to my post? Add that because that's different than, okay, than reaching out to people from other countries. Um, Adding value to your posts. I um, kind of have, I came back from our leadership um, in Vegas and was finding myself getting really burnt out on the posts that I was doing, the posts and the stories I was doing. And I was getting bored. And I'm like, if I'm getting bored, my peeps are probably getting bored. So I um, had this kind of moment when I was flying back and I'm like, you know what? I need to go back to sharing Jatana, sharing me, sharing my story. And I feel like, I mean, this dang ta cheesy tagline that stories sell and facts don't, they just tell. And nobody is motivated, encouraged, inspired to take action on facts. And so I really wanted to dig into telling my story and embracing bits and pieces of my life and little small chunks, I guess you could say, in, in terms of posts. Um, and adding value that way. So I share things that I'm either dealing with or I have succeeded in, and that is adding value to my audience. So just recently I started talking about the seasonal affective disorder, because that's real for me. That's something I battle. And like my inbox blows up with 
I mean, I'm passing people to Lindsay Duran because she's like giving them vitamin D and D recommendations, but um, my inbox blows up with what vitamin D are you taking? What is SAMe? What light are you using? That's huge because those are conversation starters for me. So I'm adding value to people who that is, that is not fitness related, but there's something they're actually struggling with, which by the way, nutrition and working out helps in that area. They're all like, I'm dealing with the same thing. I'm tired, sluggish. I'm dealing with winter depression as well. Can you help me? What are you taking? Incredible conversations in my inbox about that topic, which leads into, girl, let me love on you for 30 days. Like, let me show you the activities that I do each day to make me feel a lot better, not perfect, but a lot better throughout these winter months. And that gets you a new challenger. So to answer your question, Stephen, um, making sure you're adding value by sharing the pieces of your life that are valuable. Like, what would people come and ask you advice on? Like, that's one quick question to ask yourself. What do people? What would your friends come and ask you on advice on? Write those things down on a list. What do people ask me advice on? They'll ask me about what. How do I treat sad? Um, they'll ask me what kind of lashes I use. They'll ask me what does my nutrition look like? What do I eat on an everyday basis? Um, how do I curl my hair? Like those are the kind of things and that's how you add value to your audience. You give them things that they would love to learn from you and that's going to look different person to person. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Stephen. And everybody, like I said, everybody's looks different because everybody's, I mean, Lindsay is a great example. She battles with, I watched your stories today. She battles with PCOS, right? And so she goes live and she's like, listen, this is a struggle for me. I've got is endometriosis and PCOS. And this is what I've done to overcome this and deal with this. And her audience is receiving it. It's not, do you want to join my challenge group? Do you want to become a coach on my team? But they are receiving value from her and she becomes valuable to them or they continue to follow you. They continue to want to see what kind of information you put out. Um, and so that's her, like, that's her superpower and everybody has something different. If you're a mama twins, that might be your superpower. If you're a great meal planner, that's your superpower and everybody has something that's different. So just share that. And it comes from an authentic place too. I think that's the other beautiful thing is you're not trying to put up this coach facade, this perfect, um, fitness life. Cause we all know we're just normal human beings, like thrown into this beach body world, trying to be on our journey. Not everybody's a personal trainer, not everybody's a nutritionist. Um, and so, you know, rock your story and add value to the people who are following you. Nicola, you're yawning. <laughs> She's like, you're you're boring. No, I'm sorry, I'm so tired. Um, okay, that was the end of all of the questions that were in both groups. Okay. Christy Ebright on here, you, she wants to know, do you use Facebook or I'm assuming this is the challenge tracker, Christy? Is that what you're talking about? MCT? Yeah. It's her birthday. She wants to rest up. You're so funny. Yes. So she wants to know, do you use Facebook or the um, challenge tracker? I use Facebook. Um... I have used the challenge tracker in the past. Um, I'm probably a creature of habit. And so I have a really hard time shifting when things are comfortable for me. Um, and so um, I've just found that Facebook works really well. I found it be more intimate. Um, I can go live in there. I feel more connected with my challengers. Why are you laughing, Lindsay? <laughs> I just said intimate and she just started giggling. <laughs> um, so I don't, but as some of our coaches on our team do use the challenge tracker, I know that we have a coach who is, um, i trying to remember who it was. Somebody, was it Holly? Candace uses it really, really well. Candace yeah. Wiseman, she does really well with it. She has a lot of interaction and a bunch of her people would rather be on there than Facebook. So it's like talking to Candace, you just have to figure out like where your people are pretty much. Where, I mean, your market, I mean, if you have an, a little bit of an older crowd, they might prefer one thing over the other. If you have a younger crowd, they might. I mean, my IG people, I'm starting to talk to them now. They're like, I don't have Facebook. And I'm like, oh, Lord, here we go. You're too young to have Facebook, really? <laughs> and then I have to consider, like, how am I going to manage that? And so I, gotta, I say whatever works best for you as long as people are staying connected and plugged in. But I use Facebook groups. 
So that is all the questions I had. I even checked the group again. So does anybody else have questions? You guys can unmute if you want. Um, we had a great call, um, great diamond call last night. Um, I don't mean to put the birthday girl on the spot. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. It's Kelly's birthday tonight. Um, you were talking yesterday. Everybody say happy birthday, Kelly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot. Happy birthday, Kelly. Look, I'm drinking a beer just for your birthday. <laughs> Aren't you proud of me? Um, she hates this. Shut up, y'all. <laughs> um, she gave us a ton of value last night on Guy McConnell. Oh my God, please tell me more. Um, what were you saying in terms of your? I'm sorry. You were talking in terms of your scripts and your invites. What was working for you last night on the Diamond Call? Do you remember? <laughs> Uh, uh. I don't know. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Sorry. No, you, you, were, um, you were hustling like crazy in your inbox and going through scripts and things like that. What you were oh, to us? Um, so I don't like use. Sorry, my voice is like cracking. Um, I don't use scripts, but I do follow like the. Um, I forget what it's called, like five-step invitation. I don't know. It's like something super duper old, but it's basically, um, it's a, I, I would say it's more of a flow of how my conversations go. Um, but I do, um, oh my God, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. So I use that flow for everyone, but what I say is not necessarily copy and paste. Um, and um, I will say that for me personally, like, I feel like the connecting part is something that a lot of people rush and you cannot rush that part. Like that's a huge part of it. So um, you have to remember that people do love to talk about themselves. Like they may not say that, but they do. So if you start asking questions and one of the questions that I, I literally ask this first every single time, I'm like, all right, girl, fill me in on what you have been doing. If you have been working out, like what seems to be your biggest struggle and let's work up a plan from there. And usually people will respond with like paragraphs, like sometimes too much information. I'm like, oh, shit, like, what do I do now? <laughs> like, I am not a psychiatrist, but um, they will come back with a lot of information. And from there, like, you have all this info. And once you have all those struggles they have, and I don't mean this to sound like sketchy, but like, you kind of have them hooked. Like, you have all that emotional pull and like, you have all of those struggles. Like, you can then tell them why this will work for them but you can't rush those things like you kind of have to dig deep with them like okay I see I know exactly what you're saying about struggling with nutrition kids being in sports like running every which direction like trust me I you know I'm in the same boat as you um so what are your dinners like like are you eating out a, like you know what I mean like you've got to keep pulling the info and the more you get the more um they become um trusting of you because you're in the same boat. I mean, don't lie. If you don't struggle, like what they're talking about, don't be like, yeah, I struggle with that too. And you don't, but, um, anyways, um, and then, um, you also have to be bold about it. Like you have to take out like the maybes and like, you know, like you don't want them to question what you're offering them. Like you want to, you know, this works. Like we're all here for a reason because we've either seen success with the programs or we're having su like success right now. Um, so don't doubt yourself. Don't be like, well, maybe you might want to join my next, like, no, like, girl, this is for you. Like, I know this is going to get you those results. Like, you need to be in my next group. Like, what do you say? Like, you know what I mean? Take out that doubt because when you put the doubt into your invite, they feel that. Just like Jatana was saying about the energy. Like, they can feel that awkwardness. But um, uh, what else was the question? Sorry, I don't even know. I'm just rambling and talking. I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Well, you had talked about the steps and you were giving even the options of like, you oh, yeah, this or you could do that. And you noticed that people actually, there was even a tactic behind that. What was, so, um, and I will say this is once somebody has completely agreed to joining my group, they're like, okay, yes, I want in. And I say, all right, perfect. Send me your email address and I will send everything over to get you set up. They send me their email address. Then, so you cannot rush this. This is not like a, 
yeah, I think I'll join you. Like, okay, here's option one and option two, guys. Like, no, let them completely agree. They've sent their email and I say, all right, I'm about to send the email, but I did want to let you know there's two ways that you can get set up. And I say, option one, retail customer, I personally list everything out they get. Like, I make sure they know they're going to get a year access of all the workout programs, the workout calendars, like, y'all, everything. <laughs> um, and then I say, you know, it's for this, whatever, um, for 160 or option two, you can sign up as a preferred customer slash discount coach. It's the same exact price as option one. Like you're not going to pay anything more today, but it's going to get you the 25% off um, the future orders. Like, you know, staying on Shakeology or whatever. Um, and I say at the end, and I think this is a huge part of it, is either way, either option you choose, you are going to get into my group and we're going to get you going on something that they mentioned. Um, and I just say, let me know which option and I'm going to send the email over. And most people like y'all, I signed up as a discount coach. Like I literally was like, I am not selling shit. I am posting on social media. Like this woman's done gone nuts. Like I just want 25% off. <laughs> like literally, I mean, I'm not even joking. Like that's my attitude. That's what I said. Like a couple of months. I'm like, she's nuts. Um, but I wanted the discount. Like who doesn't want to save the money so I do always toss that out um and I get a lot of people who do option two just because they want to save money and they want to stick with it like um but yeah I don't know <laughs> but I think also you just have to do the things like you just have to do it you can't expect to do one call to action and get people to join you you can't expect to reach out to somebody one time and expect them to join you you cannot follow up once a month and expect people to like, you've just got to do it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I notice a difference when I'm slacking and like, all I can blame is myself. Like, I mean, that's really all there is to it. Um, but I don't know. Tara asks, can you use, um, the share cart for the preferred discount route? So that's just signing them up as a coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we say preferred customer for or a discount, that's basically a coach. Yeah, so I, I do use preferred customer slash discount coach. Like, I do put coach in there. So when they get the email, they're not like, oh, she, what, what's she talking about, coach? Um, you know, they've seen that word. Um, but, I, I mean, I, I, oh, she's not even on. Stacy has used it, and same thing happened with her. They're like, yeah, option two. Like, but it, I will say, I think wording plays a huge part in it. And especially that end part, like either way, you're going to get into my group. It kind of takes that pressure off of like, oh, which one should I choose? Like, you know, they don't feel so. Um, and I don't know. The other thing, and I don't know who's that I talked about last time. I'm just going to keep rambling now. Um, Cause you know, what else do we do on Wednesday nights? Um, the other thing I was talking about last night was, um, pay attention to who's liking your stuff. Pay attention on Instagram stories, especially who's watching your stuff, because here's the difference between Instagram and Facebook on Facebook. We can't tell who's watching our post. Like I can't tell if random girl over here saw my post, if she didn't like it on Instagram stories, I can see who's watching. And they're watching for a reason. It's not because like they have no light, like they're watching you for a specific reason and they know what you're doing. So those are people that you can strike up conversation with and you know that they've seen you. Like I can go strike up a conversation and I know that they know my kids are crazy or I know that they know whatever. Um, so I've really been focusing there on taking note of who's, who's watching my stories, um, going to their pages, seeing if there's somebody similar to me or somebody, you know, um, that I can connect with and starting to connect. And by connect, I mean, commenting on a picture, like responding to something, not like, Hey girl, you should be in my group. <laughs> um, but just connecting with them and just seeing how it goes. Um, I will tell you right now, not every person you connect with is going to turn into an invite. Like that's just me. I don't know. That's just the way it is. But um, I, you know, that's been an easy thing for me because like I said, they, you know that they've seen your stuff since they're watching you. Um, okay. okay. I don't know. What else? What, what else you want to talk about? <laughs> it's my birthday. Let me just keep talking. 
Um, Carly said, is it bad to start as a coach when you've never tried a program? So I'm just starting my journey with Beachbody as well. Um, I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, I signed you up as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think that it's, it's one of those things where, and I think that goes back to what are your goals as a coach? And sometimes people sign up as a coach because they just want to be a part of a community of people. They want to be a part of a community of people who are on the same journey, whether it means they want to get the discount and surround themselves with like-minded people or they want to become a millionaire. Like there's a broad spectrum there of what you want out of this business and both are possible and anywhere in between. And so Carly, you're signing up and you're just starting your fitness journey. And honestly, that's a great place to start because you are authentically going to be sharing your journey, the beginning of it on social media, documented for people to watch instead of somebody who's really quiet and they go 60 days of insanity or 21 days of 21 day fix. All of a sudden they're like, boom, now I've gained, I've got results. And people are like, what, what? <laughs> you got results on what? Um, but you, I think you should be like, this is day one. This looks, and I'm really having a hard time, but I'm trying to get through it. My team is helping me. I'm on this call tonight. I feel really motivated. I'm so excited about tomorrow. Um, and that is something that you can, people, what, people love to watch and be a part of a story in your journey. Yep, so true. So rock it on, Carly. All right, what else? Any other questions? I mean, like y'all, oh, I guess we've been going a little while, haven't we? I'm right here, I can answer anything. Oh, you had one more question, just popped up. Um, Somebody wants to know how can you get a discount coach to be a uh, to share their journey when there isn't like a transformation yet. Share your journey. <laughs> but how do you encourage them to do it when there is no like it's the the very beginning? Um, I go ahead. No, are you good? Then say that again, Nicole, because because I deal with this all the time. Okay, so they want to know, like, how can you encourage a discount coach that wants to work the business now when there is no transformation yet? Like, you know, they're just starting their health journey as well. Which, which is exactly kind of what I just posted, is that people, like, if you think about yourselves, you really wanted to be a part of something that was being created rather than something that already was created. Because they can relate to the pain points in your story, and they can relate to the successes that you're having in your story. So when you're discount, if you're a discount coach and then you're just starting out and you're like, you know how hard it is to show up for seven days, three days to get up? Do you know how hard it is just to have a shake, to, to get into a shaker cup? Or do you know what, what a victory it was to step on a scale and be down two pounds? I haven't worked out for seven days in a row in 18 years. It's a big deal. People can relate to those pain points really easy because I, and from a, take it from a guy who's, I mean, listen, I can go in and out of six pack, a 12 pack of abs easily. People can't relate to my 12 pack of abs. I, I'm just being real. They're like, they're cool. But I, whoa, whoa is Mike? Like he went to Vegas and now he doesn't have a 12 pack. He's got a six pack. I feel bad. But when you look at a discount coach, it's like, you know what? I really want to be able to do this. And when they say share it, because there is somebody out there that your day 30 is their day one. Your day one is their day before they met you. They need you to share that so that they can relate to it and say, if she can, I can. And if that's what she's going through, that's what I want to feel. That if she can get three pounds lost or bloat lost in five days, man, I'd kill for that. They want to go along for the ride. Think about it. If I told you the end of the story at the beginning of a book, would you read the in-between? And Jatana is queen of the stories. And that's why we all love her. That's why we all watch her. That's how we all follow her. That's why we all do what she does. And we believe in her because she tells the story. She takes you on the journey. So a discount coach at any time can take you on a journey. And if you're a discount coach, get ready, man. 
you're ready to share your journey and take those people on it. There are people waiting for you to see you do it and see your success because they're right where you are or maybe even in a worse place. Yep. I agree. And it's a great accountability for you. I mean, if you're just starting out on your health and fitness journey, um, it's a great way. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be some coach who's been coaching for three years and they have this perfectly crafted post. If you're just doing it as a discount, like use it as your own personal accountability and tell your audience that that's what I would encourage. If I signed a discount coach and like, I don't really know what to share. But like, listen, just say, I'm starting a journey and I want to be accountable to it. And so I'm going to share with you daily what I'm accountable, how I'm being accountable to my own health and fitness journey. Um, what else? That was a good question. That's all I have. Nicola, it's your birthday tomorrow. It is it's Kelly King's birthday today. Kelly King's birthday today. She's 21. Kidding, okay, she's 34 and proud. <laughs> and she worked her business. I mean, seriously, girl's got goals. What else? Carly said, Happy birthday, girls. Two of my favorite people, one day apart. Almost as light. We're twins. What else? Anything else, y'all? You good? Everybody's going to go diamond tomorrow? <laughs> Does everybody have a goal date? That's the other thing, you guys, with your business. <laughs> Lindsay, like, you have to have a date in which you want something to be achieved, and then you have to figure out how you're going to get there and, and reverse engineer that backwards. And so if it's fixing your diamond or it's going emerald or it's signing your spouse up. When are you gonna sign your spouse up? Are you gonna sign them up tonight? Are you gonna sign them up on Friday when you get paid? Um, when are you gonna go Emerald? Emerald is a decision. We always said that. There was a um, Emerald in 24 hours call that I posted in our Epic Team page and our Two Star Diamond page. Um, and if you are questioning of like, I don't even know what that means or how to do it, go watch that call. Um, because Nicolette really spells it all out for you of how to go Emerald in 24 hours. Um, because I truly believe it's a decision. Um, and Diamond is one of those things where you just go Emerald over and over and over again. Like literally, just think, go Emerald over and over and over again and you will get to Diamond. You will find those people who want to run the business with you. Tracy, where are you at, girl? Unmute your line. You should be Diamond like any day now. Yeah. I'm I'm getting there. I'm close. Yeah, what's working for you in your business right now? Being really a part of what the, their journey with them. I'm realizing that um, I'm holding a lot of people accountable. And so my mission is to keep them on their journey so they don't fall off track. And I've had a couple of people fall off, but I just got them back on. And I have a couple of people that are actually discount coaches that are kind of ready to work the business. Um, so I'm, I feel like I'm a person away, but it shifts here and there. But I'm, I'm ready. I, my date is this month. So just so you know, I would love to be Diamond by Halloween for sure. Yeah. All right, we're all holding her to it. Diamond by Halloween. Shelly's pushing me all the time. She even made a team call for me today. So she's my girl. You got this. You got this. Um, so set that date. You know what I mean? Like she picks the date and then don't like let off the pedal. Do all the actions it takes to get you there and focus on that. And your, your actions will line up with your goal. Um, anything else? Team call wise. Shelly? You might talk about having a success partner to push you because that's a really big deal especially if you're a new coach finding somebody that's gonna push you and have equal goals or something like that yeah um you know i went i've had a few success partners in my six at least six years in january and it's one of those things where it can be a hit or miss. You got to be okay with letting people go when it doesn't work and it not be a feelings hurt, but it's got to be somebody who challenges you. Um, it can't be somebody who's going to have a pity party with you. That's the worst. And that's what I see a lot of is two, especially two women pairing up together 
and they don't push each other, but they complain together. We like to do that. Like, let's just say, let's just be real. Um, and so I've seen a lot of successful success partners, even on our team. I know Lindsay and Kelly, like I see them all the way. They're doing their little calls together. They gig look, they're giggling at the same time. Like they're on the same wavelength, this whole call. One laughs, the other laughs. They're probably texting each other right now, but Lindsay went diamond. Kelly's slaying her business. I know that they are crushing it together. Um, and which is really cool about that is now then a friendship is formed. And now they're amazing friends. And I know Tracy and Shelly, you guys are success partners. So find somebody who's going to push you, who is going to uh, be creative with you. If you sit down on a call with them and you're like, I am like feeling like empty right now. I don't know where to go with my business. They're going to be like, all right, well, let's map this out. Like, what are, you, what are your goals? What are your plans? How can we, and have them you know, push you a little bit. And, but the worst thing you can do with a success partner, if you get into this situation with somebody, and I've been in this situation with a success partner years ago, and the worst thing you do is have somebody complain constantly. So if they're going to align with me, if they're going to align with you, especially if you're one of my coaches, they need to be a badass and they need to like kick your butt and hold you accountable. Um, and so that, that's, the best thing I can say is look for somebody who's going to push you and be willing to share your same goals and vision for where you want your business to go. And even go out of the team, you know? Yep. You need to. Sometimes going out of the team is nice because it allows you to pick up other ideas that you wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, I know that a lot of coaches have done that as well. I, I follow Mike for that exact reason. I mean, his, I like his spirit. I like his funness on the skateboard and the pictures. And then it makes me want to like get outside my box a little bit, you know? And so even following other people on other teams. And I think I actually met him through you, Jatana, yeah, right? Was he like taking pictures for us at Summit? Uh -huh. and, and so like, I feel like when I watch him, I'm like, all right, I need to, I want to get more spunky like him. You know, I could do that. I could do that. And then, so anyway, I just thought I would share like even watching some of the other coaches and what they do get us excited, you know? One of my, sorry, go ahead. I just say this, careful in watching other coaches, watch coaches that like inspire you and like make you like want to have fun. That, that, I think she hit on something that's really like, like interesting and said, she gets inspired by my energy and my fun and, you know, and my uh, ability to kind of live life and grab it and, you know, and, and, and be quirky and weird and goofy and not really, let me just say this, not really give a crap about what other people think about me because really I don't. Like, I don't care. 49. Right is, I give a crap what people think about me and he pushes right. me higher. That's what makes Tatan and I really good because she'd be like, but Mike, and I'm like, who cares? <laughs> um, but I will say this. I just want to make sure that I kind of end this quick. is just that following other coaches. I mean, I've done it. It's beating me up, you know, because I'm like, oh, gosh, like they're doing so great. Like their world's awesome. I will just give you this world of advice when following up. Follow the ones that you grab energy from and that give you energy back. Don't worry about what they're doing with the business, where they're at, how they're doing. Not one bit. Because just let me tell you this. Think about this when you were in high school. And think about all the people that you thought were the cool kids and they're awesome people and everything else. But you really didn't know what was going on behind the closed doors of their house. Remember what social media is. And don't get eaten up by it. And don't get eaten up about where they're at. Get eaten up about where you're at in your life and how great it is and what you're giving back and the fun people. You're, oh my God, look at Mike. He just rode down a rail, you know, or he rode down, a, like he just went nuts down a staircase, like on a skateboard. What's he thinking? What an idiot. That is way better to watch than like, oh my gosh, look at Super Coach. Like she's got like 18 more coaches and she's, you know, it's great. And now she owns a boat. Like, it's enough to make me want to take antidepressants. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? Like, let's just be honest. Like, great. She got a boat. Where's the beer? <laughs> One of my favorite group of partners is um, Julie Voris and Danielle Natoni. I think they're like the epitome of success partners. I don't know if you guys follow Danielle Natoni and Julie Voris, but they are, I wouldn't say they're very similar. Like, I think they're very different in their personalities and um, they just work so well together. And so that's kind of been my picture of what it should look like with a success partner. And they push each other and they're both crushing goals. 
Um, so, all right, well, it's going on 10.03 here on the East Coast. And so I'm gonna get some rest. Hopefully that helped answer some of your questions. You guys go out and crush your goals. If you're in our two-star group, let's get to diamond, people. Time to get to work. All right, y'all have a great night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.